Morning ESPN Classic. Dead Good Sports on Channel 442. Football next. And if you needed proof of our commitment to football, notice we've even dedicated our channel number to Sven's favourite formation. That's the Cologne lineup. One change from the first leg. They've had to bring in at centre half Gert Strack, who takes the place of the injured Gerber. And it will mean some tactical changes. Kuhlman, I'm sure, will play at the back. And Schuster will move forward to midfield, although I would think a pretty defensive midfield player. So, with the exception of Zimmerman, it's the side which suffered their worst league defeat of the season 1 5 to Bayern Munich on Saturday. Just four substitutes, including. Heinz Floher, the club captain. That's the Nottingham Forest lineup. They too have made changes in defence, of course. The return of Anderson and Burns. Boyer will continue where he played in the second half of the first leg in midfield. And the front line total 55 goals. And this is Nottingham Forest's 55th game of the season. Again, just four substitutes. Woods, the goalkeeper, O'Hare, midfield or forward, Needham and Bryn Gunn, the youngster defenders. The referee, Nicolas Renier of Romania, gets his second leg underway with Forrest commencing a straightforward, if not simple task. They need their 13th away win of the season and they have 90 minutes to achieve it. Forest in the all red strip, the dark strip, Cologne in white. And that's Zimmerman who's got forward right at the start. And the corner conceded. Conditions in marked contrast with the first leg. Plenty of green grass on the pitch. And little sign of mud. Pitch barely taking a short stud. Schrack to come up into the box at the back and there'll be another corner headed away by Martin O'Neill. Plenty of big men forward. Three on the near post, one on the far for Cologne. Peter Shulton waiting his first test. Anderson on the near post. And turned over by Schuster. And in fact... It came off Boyer. So early pressure from Cologne. And it's Vice Vila, their manager, or their trainer, obviously deciding he's got to play to the team's natural style, which is to attack. Which is true, of course, of Nottingham Forest. Brian Clough said at lunchtime that the early moments will be important. Forest have not got to go out and chase this victory. They've got to settle first. And they're being put under early pressure. Shilton has come for it. It's Prestine. Nicely back to Konopka. And a beautiful swerve. And well headed away by Lloyd. And the first free kick. And the inevitable booze from the crowd. Konopka is the player down. Slovak for looking at. And just a quick word with Gary Bertels. Schuster still up on the edge of the area. Away by Anderson. John McGovern for Forrest. They really can't get it away at all. And the flag out for offside against Zimmerman. Peter Shilton with the chance to steady things down. Bertels and Woodcock, the furthest forward. Woodcock, in fact, pushing well up on number three, Zimmerman. The marking continue from the first leg. They are the two together. Schuster, number five. And Bertels 
almost taking advantage of some rather casual play by Zimmerman. Coolman, the skipper, who came across. Woodcock. Neumann is number 10. Good play by McGovern. But a goal kick. Coolman. Struck. And going nowhere fast. All right, front men pushing up then on the defence as they try to play it out. Here's Bertles. Woodcock is near post. And further over to O'Neill! Oh, he really thumped that. Really got hold of that, Martin O'Neill, and came in very sharply. Curling cross away from the defenders, and in came O'Neill, met it on the pull. Strack. Konopka. Schuster. Neumann taking over. The two looking rather similar, but Neumann is, is somewhat the taller. Dieter Muller. Curled in. Van Gool away by Byrne. Schuster. And that swerved a lot. Chilton having to adjust his feet just a bit to get all the body behind it. under pressure from the back looked at the referee but he allowed him to get away with what could have been a push Prestine Konopka so much again on the touchline McGovern Woodcock marked by Schuster this time Robertson he's wandering around quite a lot faced by Schuster O'Neill. Bertel is in Strack. Good volume of support for Forrest. And the flag is up. And an offside decision given. Seen again starting a Cologne move from deep in his own half. Neumann to Schuster. Muller. Van Gaul out on the left. Haven't seen too much of the ball yet. And Anderson wins the first real confrontation between the two. Van Gaul. Belgian player in the German team. A lone ball given. Almost running to Boya. Schuster. Neumann. Three players forward of him in 
a white strip and go a little bit fortunate then O'Neill covering but Van Gaul still carrying on and Schuster unable to find the finishing header Schuster made about 60 yards on that from the back first time we've seen Van Gaul really causing Forrest problems he was a little bit fortunate but his cost was just too high fortunately for Forrest Lovac to take the corner and cool again on the near post Burns got up very well Schuster to Schrack Christine in his defensive role Woodcock going to mark the creeper who had to pull back a long way Coleman creeper the spare defender at the back his boot, Schuster it's going to be a very important contest between these two here's Neumann blocked by Lloyd and then Burns needing to get up well O'Neill, Bowyer making a good run in the inside left position it's Bertels O'Neill has gone on and taken Prestine with him. That's for Robertson. Clark. O'Neill. Bertels to the right. The other way is McGovern. Schuster's challenge. Schuster playing just in front of the back four. McGovern shot off Strack. And here's Neumann. Burns. Bertels trying to flick it down for McGovern. Van Gogh. Lovac. Muller. And cleanly away from Lloyd. Oh, and it's just picked up and curled away for the corner. Muller completely leaving Lloyd here and that's the second time in the match the goal kick has been given but I must say I thought that the Shilvin got a touch we can see well I think it came off his arm Bowyer Bertel Zimmerman have followed him across here's Woodcock and the back man did his job showing him the McGovern though really good blocking by Kanopka who came across So yeah. Bertels. And Dooley was caught in possession. Woodcock. Got a lot to do, being lent on a bit by Zimmerman. But he gets the corner. But he's causing Zimmerman to work pretty hard for his living. three men covering the near post Anderson has come up this time and Van Gaul has come back with him good clearance by Schumacher Peter Muller the break is left with Neumann he's still there and now he's got Kanopka Muller going all the way and the corner is given but I think he made the wrong decision then Peter Muller he had Neumann clear to his left and he had a man coming up to his right but he continued to carry
Frank has come forward again. Schuster in the area too. Here's Strack. And Lloyd was lost. Frank really just threw himself at the ball. Robertson had to turn away because Muller was between him and Shilton. one who's committing them but he's having so much to do on his own half an hour the match gone no score here in the second leg Peter Muller getting some attention on the bench Five final the trainer there with him Neumann Burns came forward and got lost Slovak, Zimmerman, who gave the ball to him, Tanopka, so we've got both fullbacks forward in this attack for Cologne. Oh, yeah, again, Shilton was unsure about that. Tanopka's curling shot. And a bit of a nightmare, this, for Shilton. He seemed just at the top of the picture. Curling, he starts to come changes his mind and finds nobody else is taking it and it's coming in further than he thought meantime in live pictures we're looking at a quick free kick taken by Kanopka for Colon has seen often in the left back position of course Zimmerman following Woodcock everywhere he goes but Zimmerman also taking the chance to go forward when he can which he is now in fact here he is number three Van Gool tripped by Anderson the whistle has gone an example there of a man who has a man for man marking job suddenly becoming an extra attacker and acting as a spring ball for an attack with Van Gool brought down by Anderson That's quite a long way out of the five-man wall. The kicker's view and Shilton's right side covered. Strack might have a go. Or Schuster. O'Neill ready to attack the ball. And the yellow card being given against Kanopka for not taking the kick and they're complaining because they feel that O'Neill wasn't 10 yards Strack still waiting and finally also O'Neill got with the encouragement of both German players and the home crowd. Now down to four men. Bistrak, blocked by O'Neill. Kanopka, fouled by Woodcock. Forest players obviously feeling that uh, Kanopka made a lot of that. Set up as before, except that Schuster's going to have the crank this time. And again, it was O'Neill who blocked. Burns at the back. Robertson. Clark. Bertels and Woodcock both on the left side. Robertson. Kuhlman. Cool 
free kick given against Clark. Peter Muller making a little bit of a meal of that. In fact, it's Slovak, not Muller. And obviously, not her. Not sure, I think that's the second yellow card that he's received. So Cologne get through. Cost him his place in the final. I don't suppose that doesn't matter in the end anyway. That's the corner. Well, they're still feeling the back of his right thigh. Ten minutes of the first half remaining. There's been more action in this goal mouth than in the other. Track up for the umpteen corner. Turning a lot again. Good right hook. The ball going rather wider, I think, than Shilton had anticipated. Good break up by Bowyer. Woodcock looking for Robertson, who was hanging back. And all by Shilton in the Cologne half. Lloyd. And it for Bowyer. McGovern. Bertles. Lloyd just got a foot in, but to no real advantage. Clark. Cologne never bereft of cover. Woodcock and Zimmerman. And the free kick given against Robertson. Another Zimmerman, 25 in July. Lloyd. Bertles. Anderson is forward. And it looked to me at the very least as though he was obstructed by Schuster. Which of the Germans are going to make a substitution? Time slower is warming up on the touchline, just out of our view. It's Clark. Woodcock. There's slower. Clark, didn't see McGovern square. Woodcock once more, go kick. Woodcock, I think, entitled to expect a bit more support than he's getting. And Slower, the club captain. Coolman, almost came in the opposition half. Kenny Burns. Clark. Burns looking for movement up front. And Strach. Play on to the referee. Kanopka was there before Robertson. I'm afraid it's been too often the case. Right about it. See the motor is going to come off. Crack. Net the shoulder of Barrier. Get back in his third season with Cologne. In the meantime, the substitution is made. And there's Heinz Floher, who's come on in place of Muller. Well, 
so they've lost the forward player for a midfield player five minutes of the first half remaining nil nil the score the three three on aggregate draw is good enough for Heinz Flores side Cologne but Forrest have to win So has been out of the team with uh, injury to his chest and also hamstring problems Christine and Flora at the moment playing as a centre forward Neumann Van Gool Zimmerman Off Lloyd to a corner. Wilson thought he kept it in, but the linesman, who was some 15 to 20 yards away, had his flag up. And it's just possible he's given an offside decision. Steins right there were two players offside All right, the free kick to Nottingham Forest no it's not it's a corner well all the players now having to come from midfield back to take the corner which was my feeling in the first place explains to the players having seemingly been uh, well, at least persuaded to change his mind in the first place and I don't know it, he's given a corner was his first sign it's an awful long conversation with the linesman so the Forest have maintained their concentration after all that fracas curl once again Lloyd met it well Bertels Chase for Woodcock. Clark. Bertles. Boyer. That's the sort of pace that Forrest are in need of, and he's done well. Goal kick. It's the final account, but an example there of what a difference a bit of pace can make. I think the Brian Clough will be requiring rather more of that in the second half. Tendency to play the ball up to Woodcock, make him work for it, but the movement around him is nothing like quick enough to beat a man-for-man -man marking defence. Neumann. Kuhlman covering. Kanopka. And Gould shooting it away from Lloyd. And a trip given against Robertson. To move into the last minute of the first half. Forest, the seventh English club that Cologne have faced and they've been beaten by all except Arsenal. They also lost to the Scottish side Rangers. And they beat earlier in this season's uh, European Cup competition. It's Kuhlman. Schumacher Rainier looking at his watch it's Robertson Bowyer Burns moving up on the far side here's Woodcock, plenty of players forward here for Forrest 
And it's still there for Clark to pick out. O'Neill couldn't get there. Coleman between two five players. Lloyd. Burns is still forward. Lower. McGovern. And we reach half time with a blank score sheet. Which means that it's 3 3 on aggregate. Certainly more pressure at the forest end. But just the occasional bit of pace injected by Bowyer to supplement the great deal of hard work done up front by Woodcock, giving Forrest perhaps some signs for the second half. So away you go, Nottingham Forest on the second half, attacking the goal to our right against the side who have been beaten three times at home this season, Cologne. They've uh, lost to Eintracht. Frankfurt, they've lost to Hamburg and they've lost to Stuttgart. All sides are up at the top of the table. Talking at the top of the Bundesliga, Stuttgart lead from Kevin Keegan's side, Hamburg, who are a point behind with a game in hand. Score an aggregate 3 3. All Forest need is one breakaway goal. Never mind if they're under pressure for 89 minutes. If they score a goal in the 90th minute, that will take them to Munich and the European Cup final. Clark. Woodcock has come short, gone away again. Bertels has done the same. The ball with Lloyd. It's intended to be about 20 yards further forward. Nil-nil with almost an hour of the match gone. 3-3 three, three on aggregate. Just one goal would be enough for Forrest. Cologne don't need to score, they can hold it at this. Woodcock, away from two, but met the back man, Schuster. Kuhlman now breaking for Cologne. Came off his knee, good challenge by Anderson. pinching about 10 yards Clark almost losing out to Konopka and fouling him to keep him away alone very experienced in Europe this is their 17th season in European competition they've been in every season of the 70s and their record in the Bundesliga which is now in its 16th season is better than any other side Sinopka with the kick five in the box for Cologne at the back is Neumann and Lloyd just got there first Bertels came across real struggle between Van Gaal and O'Neill good challenge by Strack but now O'Neill he's got Woodcock to his right taking on the back man and the back man Schuster comes from defence into attack his slower Van Gaal Schuster now up in the box here's Neumann Lovac, the triangle by the Germans. Konopka. Straight to McGovern. 
Bertel with a bit of space. And he's done well. He's only got Woodcock up with him. Now Free coming behind, but he's done two of them. Woodcock is in the middle. And it just was a stuck out leg that got it away. I think from Prestine. It really is end to end stuff now. It's becoming a marvellous semi final. It's four against four here. Here's Floher. And he hits it straight at Shilton. And Floher stretching to get back as O'Neill comes away for Forrest. Forrest in going for the victory that they must have. They've got a guard against leaving themselves too bare at the back. As the game swings from one end to the other. But they've got to gamble because they need the victory. Cologne don't. Here's Burns. Cologne in their fifth European semi-final. They've never been further. Forrest Ball. Robertson has come to take the corner. And they look a little bit worried. Bowyer in the six-yard area. Flicked on, there's Bowyer! Yes, he's got it! Bowyer just inside the six-yard area and the flick on and the man who's played in so many places for Nottingham Forest has the face of utter delight. The curl corner, there was the back flick on and there's Bowyer in the six-yard box unmarked who's curled it inside and into the roof of the net. 64 minutes gone and the Union Jackson Forest flags being waved in the Mungasorpa Stadium. Nottingham Forest have their noses in front. 4-3 on aggregate. And now the whole balance of the tide changes. On by Neumann. But I think that Forest, if being a little more steady at the back, have got to keep playing the way they're playing. I'm sure their supporters would want them to do that. I cannot allow Cologne to have more of the pressure. Burns didn't quite make it with Kuhlman forward. Really a question of playing to your natural instincts and the natural instincts of Nottingham Forest is to go forward. And you can probably hear a very familiar British chant, we shall not be moved. Bowyer breaking again down the middle and Anderson on the right side and Lloyd forward as well Clark oh dear Bowyer did well to collect that Bertel taking on Strack and met the sweeper Schuster Blow her. That's O'Neill. Christine making no attempt to go for that. Anderson. No question that Cologne are very groggy at this moment. Beautifully played by Woodcock. And the referee says only corner. Woodcock hoped for more. And with some justification. And they'll have to wait to take the corner because Cologne are making a substitution. Japanese international Okudera is coming on in the place of Glovac. Exactly the same substitution as in the first leg. 20 minutes remaining. Out to Boria. Robertson. A little unlucky, it bounced off, having got it away with one, it bounced off his other leg.
Schuster. Konopka. Quality of passing has deteriorated rapidly, Cologne. Indicative of the struggle they're now having. Germans started the semi-finals of Europe with five of the 12 sides coming from their country. It's Prestine, Block, and the free kick not given. Celebration among the Forest supporters has been unabated since the goal. Here's Clark. Woodcock, who's been the man of the match for Nottingham Forest. Again, trying to get away from his man. Here's Bertels. Another German attack, starting with Dieter Prestine. Schuster coming forward. Floher. But they're bunching more now. There was no width for the Germans on that attack, and they had plenty in the first half. Lloyd and Burns together. Clark. O'Neill. Zimmerman to Neumann. Van Gool on the left. Neumann far post. This is Floher. Oh, dear, and that came off Lloyd. Floher. And Forrest survived, so they didn't know too much about it. And McGovern caught, being a little bit casual. Van Gool, they've got three in the box again, Cologne. And the nod down by Neumann, safely in the arms of Shilton. <laughs> Seven tenths minutes remaining. Forrest is nothing but well aware that if Cologne equalised, that's good enough for the Germans. They only need the draw, Forrest has to win. Zimmerman. All back part two. And here's McGovern. Saboya. Weighted well. Robertson. Obstructed surely by Konopka. The referee agrees. Alone on a reported bonus of £3,000 a man to reach the final, 6000 if they won the European Cup. There's no lacking of incentive. Six minutes left, and Forrest in possession in every sense. Woodcock. Robertson, they get the corner. which Lloyd begins to amble forward as Schuster and Prestine move back into the middle. Lloyd coming on the near post. Tennis Woodcock. Robertson. Bertels. Hit through to Bertels and well killed. Struck at his back, and the crowd impatient for the Germans to get possession. To 
it's tucked away by Prestine. And the ground's selling their story as they move into the last five minutes. And Forrest keeping Cologne in the safest area, which is in the last third of the field. Dera, it's made no impression so far. Burns. Kenny Burns has had his struggles with fitness, but even so has given Forrest a better balance in defence. Herbert Neumann made his debut against England in February 78 when the Germans came from behind to win it late on. Only cap he's got so far, here's Bertels to a very, very late flag. And there's no way that the linesman was square. Linesman was ten yards ahead of the play then. Zimmerman. Bertels challenge. Neumann. Zimmerman. Massive white shirt forward. And Kanopka, and it was blocked. And the corner. And Boya saying, calm down. I think we'll find on the replay that the shot came from the Japanese. We're not going to see it as the corner's taken. And Floa beaten to it by Anderson. Two minutes left. Coleman, Van Gaal, O'Neill, and being encouraged by supporters in front of me just to hit it down into the opposition half. The possession is a better way of doing it. Here's McGovern, O'Neill, is taking to the corner flag, I suspect. Loses out in trying to do so. Burns across the cover of Van Gaal, the ball was out of play. Johannes Law on his feet. Still more goals for Cologne than anyone, but can do nothing about the situation now. That's just a long, hopeful bash forward. Sort of thing that English guys are criticised for when their things are going against them. They're less than a minute away from doing what many people thought was impossible, Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. It's struck. Kunopka. Kuhlman now playing at centre forward. On by Neumann. Here's Kuhlman. Anderson. Oh, he's only put it to Zimmerman. Off Anderson. Bowyer to him, and Burns having to die in front. Strack, Van Gaal, very nearly unbearable to watch, let alone to play. Here's Konopka, with a fine effort, and a good save by Jordan. Can he recover, and he does. Not only was that a good save, but he recovered his balance so well to grab the rebound. The only real save he's had to make, and he made it so well twice. Here's Woodcock. McGovern. Referee looking at his watch and Nottingham Forest are in the European Cup final. Carrying on where Liverpool left off. Having beaten Liverpool, they've carried on from there to keep the English flag in the final for the third year running. And they've done it the hard way to the delight of their flag-waving supporters they seem to have lost their way at home but they found their way in Cologne scoring the one goal that they needed by Ian Bowyer in the 64th minute of the match celebration scenes going on in the middle and the Forest players going over to their supporters
please not to know. I want to get help. Benny! RAC Rescue, can I help? We have your location. Get in the car. With extra patrols after dark for nighttime breakdowns, it's RAC to the rescue. Search the world for the most beautiful sofas, bright colours, luxury, comfort, vibrant styles, but nothing is more attractive than the limited introductory prices that end soon. Like this, just 485. Wow, 400 pounds off. There's four years free credit, nothing to pay for the first year, and at least 300 pounds off every sofa and corner group in the fabulous new spring collection at DFS. Morning. Morning. Cassie! Where's Mildred going? Car insurance. She's going to that internet cafe to get Swift covered. Swift covered? Well, tea breaks over in a few minutes. With swiftcover.com, you could get a car insurance quote in less than 60 seconds. Swift cover by name, swift cover by nature, eh? And you could save up to £346. Now I know why the chicken crossed the road. <sighs> For a swift way to save on car insurance, go to swiftcover.com. Because we all use our glasses at one time or another, buy one pair at Boots Opticians and get a second pair free. Give Mum a break with the KFC Mum's Night Off bucket. Best got on was to wash my friend. Cotton. Ear. Brand. Issa. Hill. Ear. <laughs> Girls are loud. Ear. Louder. Ear. Piper. Ear, sir. Lineker. Here. Take off those ridiculous promotional ears. Sir, we'll not have such things in my classroom. No more football for you for the rest of term. Do you understand? Oh, ta here. Visit walkears.com, get a free pair of ears and raise £1 million for comic relief. Cricket, rugby, football. Eight, nine and ten. It's so easy. Cricket, rugby, football. Cricket, rugby, football. Eight, nine, and ten tonight. It's so easy. Ah, oh, the memories. More football now on ESPN Classic. It's dead good. Good evening. Tonight, the Olympic Stadium in Munich stages its biggest footballing occasion since the World Cup final five years ago, the European Cup final between Nottingham Forest of England and Malmo of Sweden. Forest are very much the favourites, 9-2 on in fact, and if they do win the greatest prize in European club football tonight, then of course that huge cup that's belonged to Liverpool for two years will come back to England for the third season running. And that'll be the crowning achievement in the careers of Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. And as we wait for the teams to come out, it's worth just reflecting for a moment on just how much English clubs are dominating that uh, trophy that you now see in front of you. When you remember that we used to look back on this tournament at first with disdain and then with envy, and then of course there was the success of Manchester United and the reflected glory of Celtic, and now we have the chance to become the first country to win it three times. Nottingham Forest players on the right as we look. Ken Johnson going through for the Swedes. That's Jungberg, who's got a fine left foot. John O'Hare, one who's followed uh, Brian Clough along the way. Chris Woods at the back, the reserve team goalkeeper, still waiting for his first chance. And the officials leading them onto the pitch. The referee is Eric Linema, 
of Austria. We remember referee the game between Scotland and Holland in Mendoza. Ingmar Erlinson, who was also in the World Cup. Servine, one of the forwards. And at the back, Frank Clark. How good to see him there. He'll be 36 years old in September. And he thought his career had come to an end in 1974 when his team, then Newcastle United, were beaten by Liverpool in the FA Cup. But some marvellous support here for Nottingham Forest. So many flags. Union Jacks. There's a site that we remember from the Olympic Games and indeed the World Cup as we look at the team from Sweden. One of the youngest, average age of only 25. Two teenagers, Fritz and Schindval. Two 21-year-olds, Magnus Andersen and Ingmar Erlinson.